Is that some sort of a picture? It was in the victim's travel belt. I sent the original to Angela. We'll see what she can do. Anything else on the victim? Just a passport, house key. We really don't know much. Recent graduate at UNC. Older <sighs> sister says she's been traveling a lot. Hmm. When well, is she coming in? Yeah, she's, uh, she's on her way. Right. So, how's Brennan? Well, she's, you know, given her history and all. She's a lot tougher than she should be. Um, let me know when the older sister gets in. Right? Hey, Booth. Yeah. Well, there was nothing that you could have done. Yeah, maybe not in the moment, but there's a lot that I could have done. This is so cool. Uh, Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. This I was saying, uh, yeah, backstage, it was a crazy Oscars night last night. Uh, you were en route, though, on your way to New York, right? Actually, I was. I arrived, um, so it was late afternoon, right when the Oscars started. So I was still part of the kind of red carpet mm -hmm. nine-hour arrival thing <laughs> that happens for nine hours, probably. <laughs> and then you get to the actual Oscars. But, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was actually pretty good. It was fun. It was yeah. a fun Oscars, and I, I think Jimmy did a great job. Yeah. And, you know, I, and just, I think the eclipse, there was an eclipse last night. Did, did anyone know that? It's a lunar eclipse. Oh. So that the eclipse is the time to kind of shed and let things go, and I think that's what happened at the end. The eclipse messed up the whole yeah. thing. The energy. It's the eclipse. Yeah. A lot of people are saying it's the Russians. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Didn't get involved, but yeah. uh, it was a good show. Were you ever at an Oscars before? I, I, I went to... A lot of the parties mm -hmm. back in the day, and um, I didn't actually go to the Oscar event. So, no, I've never been to an Oscars. You probably have some good stories for us, David. Yeah, I do. I have a lot of good <laughs> stories. A lot of, a lot of fun parties that, you know, you go to these parties, and it's just a lot of people that are so excited that they won their award that they're just so excited to be out of that large kind of concept for six hours of sitting there. Yeah. You know, so they're, they're ready for a drink and, and food. So it's a good time. Glad you caught it, but we're here to talk about Bones, guys. Bones is ending. Oh. Twelve seasons. You can always watch it on reruns. <laughs> it's a fantastic. You know, it, it's 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 one of those bittersweet kind of moments for me. I, I've so enjoyed doing the show for twelve seasons and playing a character um, that I loved playing every day, and not just for like, hey, let's do six seasons and just cash it all in towards the end. I think. You know, uh, you really have to be tuned in to the actor and the aspect of the character. And Emily and I have just had such a great time doing it that, um, you know, we just got to a place where they thought, hey, it's time to move on. And then that's what happened. We're moving on. Yeah, I'm sad, though, guys. I'm really sad. Emily was here a few weeks ago. She's a blast. Yeah. She said that her last day, though, on set, um, which you directed the finale, right? Correct? Yes. Um, that she, when she left, she was in a puddle of tears. Well, we were shooting uh, this big, the, the, the series finale takes place over a lot of sequences. And one of the bigger sequences at the end is this kind of explosion shootout kind of thing. I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but um, we had two days to shoot it. And there were some weather problems, so we had to push the date. So by the time we started shooting, we had two days to do this whole sequence, which was a lot to set up. Um, I just decided to shoot Emily out in the sequences to get her out so she wouldn't have to spend the rest of the night till six or seven in the morning in Bakersfield, which is cold and windy and really didn't want that to happen. So I was able to get that done and it just so happened. I'm like, oh yeah, I have one more shot left with you. And then I'm thinking to myself, we're done. <laughs> I'm like, it was so sad. It was like, and she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, it was, I still have two hours of shooting to do on that day. So you're finished, you're wrapped. So it was so late and, and the work was so arduous that day with the running and the shooting and a lot of scenarios that she, I think it overwhelmed her in a, in a bit that was, it was a bit emotional for her and for me as well. So it was strange the way she wrapped her series, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, come on, it's Emily, she's awesome. So <laughs> she did such a great job and uh, yeah, there were some tears. Yeah. What was that like for you to kind of say goodbye um, to not only Emily, but the whole cast and crew that you've been with for years and years and years. It must, must have been tough. Yeah, I mean, when you're, it's a family environment. So for me, uh, it was, you know, I don't really like to say goodbye. I was like, good journeys, we'll see you down the line. Um, fortunate to be on a show for that many years, and, and, and really it's the cast and the crew that you have this family-oriented relationship with. So it was tough, and I think it became tougher as... The weeks went on after the show was over for me. I mean, going through this kind of decompression and 
walking around like, how many pillows can I arrange here at home? And how can I drive my family crazy? And before they say, go back to work, do something. So um, it was very emotional. We did a scene in the series finale with the two of us in the office. And what was great about it is we were able to kind of uh, connect back to the 12 seasons and use that rather than not use it. And um, there were some pretty good moments there. So I was proud of that scene that you guys haven't seen yet, you'll, which you'll see in the series finale. But it was an exercise in saying goodbye. And I used that uh, technique with her, and it worked very nicely. So sad. There's only five episodes left of Bones, right? What can we expect? What can we expect that's coming up? Uh, how will you guys wrap it up? Will you wrap it up in a nice little bow or leave it kind of open-ended? I, I think it's more, um, I won't say open-ended. I, do, I, do, I will say that people, some characters have been killed off. Maybe some more. I don't know. I know someone may get shot and hurt and injured. Maybe me, <laughs> possibly. No. Um, you know, I, I think it's done in a way that is open to the audience and the fans to say thank you for these 12 seasons, but also there's hope for a possibility of maybe a reunion or something of that nature down the line, which I would never um, say no to, depending upon what it would be like and how it would be set up. But it's a it's a it's a well presented kind of ending and it ends in it ends I'll say where it began. Yeah. So that's all I'll say about it. Which is kind of exciting. A reunion though. It all depends on the fate of your character booth cuz Yeah, I might be dead. You're throwing us off here. I'm like, "Wait, are you alive? Are you dying?" Or you? Yeah, I might you never know, but I, I heal quickly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, I used to play a character that was dead already, so yeah. I've Think never about it. heard of that back, character, right? Really. <laughs> So I'm kind of used to those characters. Oh, my God. Well, speaking of that character, are, are you down for a reunion with that show, if you're down for one with Bones? Because you get this question all the time. I do, yeah. I you really, have so I, much free time now. Come on, make it I know, happen. right? I, yeah. No, I don't think that that would happen. Um, I think as when I was doing the show and how much I loved doing the show and playing that character, being a part of that audience and the fans were so supportive and great when that show came out. And Buffy's actually having its 20th year anniversary. I think it's coming up soon. Yeah, so um, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since when that show came on the air and how it kind of <laughs> tapped into a whole new arena and what Joss Whedon did with that. And uh, it was exciting when that was going on. Um, it was overwhelming. It was it was just a lot of fun. Um, and then when we shifted over to uh, to have my own series through David Greenwall, it became a different type of show. It was a darker type of show. It was more about had an edge to it. It was more some more adult themes that were integrated in it. In fact, it was taking place in Los Angeles. Um, so you know, for me uh, personally, I would say probably not. Um, just it's just the type of character I think that is youthfully oriented. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little good older. To me, so David. Thank you. That's very <laughs> kind. But um, you know. I, I just feel it's one of those things that is uh, loved what I did and just kind of move on from there. Yeah, and you know it was one of those first supernatural dramas. I mean, we have the Vampire Diaries, we have Teen Wolf. Mm -hmm. um, are you excited that you could look back and say I, I started this genre? You know, I was I was the band for a while. Well, you know, there was a lot. I think there were other shows that were not as. I mean, I guess television shows. There were other, were there ever like shows like that or no? No. Really? <laughs> Seriously? Okay, all right, well, um, that's kind of cool. All right, all right, that's neat. I'll take that. All right, it's like Kojak. <laughs> right? It's a yeah. vampire without a lollipop. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just biting necks and kicking ass. Uh, I love that. That was a fun show. I mean, I, I think that, um, that there are more shows that spun out of that, right? There are other vampire shows, obviously, that are on the air that are successful. So, I mean, look, the undead is always fun to play, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes that, right, I guess? Everyone loves Angel, though, a little more than Edward <laughs> Cullen, right? Thank you. Um, but what's it been like for you? You know, you played Angel for a long time, and you've played Booth for a long time. Um, is that something that sticks with you, is that you play these characters for, you know, you kind of work them through this whole arc. Yeah. Are you looking forward to kind of playing a character maybe, like, one time in a movie and then being like, see you later, bye? I don't, you know, maybe. I mean, I enjoy the work. I enjoy the process of it. I enjoy the directing, the producing of it. I, for me, it's really kind of a full process. If it's going to be a series, which nowadays the series are so short, they're not as long. I mean, we do 22 episodes, and that's a, that's a pretty hefty order for a year and a lot of work. So 
for me to get involved into a series again, which may happen, um, it has to be right and has to be the, the character that I kind of respond to. And I, I remember reading Bones and being so intrigued by the character and, and by its uh, relevance to Romancing the Stone. I, I thought of that movie and the connection that those two characters had and the, the give and the take and the back and forth and the humor that could be created while solving crimes. Um, and then you add the beautiful Miss Deschanel and it's like a perfect lightning in a bottle combination. You can't, th that was just a, just very lucky to have that. So that just unfolds. And so instead of chasing certain things like that, I just want to kind of lay back and see how it, 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 it goes. Yeah. yeah. What's the biggest thing that you'll miss about playing Booth on screen? Uh, you know, he's a bit of a joker. I mean, I think deep down he had a lot of stressful moments being the fact that, you know, with whether it's PSTD or, you know, being a, an ex-ranger, a sniper, I think for him, he didn't really get to exercise a lot of that pain throughout the 12 seasons. We'll see a little bit of it in this ending of these five shows that we have. But for me, it was always the antics of being able to stretch the, the broadness of him um, in situations, whether we were arriving at a crime scene, whether it was bickering with her. The two of us were always reminded that it was always going back to the two characters. How can we make that relative? Um, so the strength was in that their relationship, and that's something that I really loved. I'll, I'll miss that. Yeah. And thinking back 12 years, is it wild to you that, you know, when you first started, there was a different president of the United States, social media wasn't really a thing. Um, has it been weird to kind of grow into this new age of technology? And Yeah, there was no iPhone when, when we started. I mean, there was, I think beepers were just on the way out or something. <laughs> um, it's fascinating to me that um, when you look back and how it's advanced so much technology, I mean, here we are in this fabulous building at AOL, and there's cameras floating all over the place, and you can live stream, and you can pick up things off of your phone. And um, it's a bit much mm -hmm. for me. I mean, television has spread to, what, like over 300 channels and different types of stories that you can tell. You have Netflix, you have Amazon, you have people that do short series, long series, uh, two-day series, so it's like, or a special event that's <laughs> on television. Um, it's spread very thin in technology so fast. And the concern I have about it is and being a, a parent, and a ch my child's 14 and my little girl's eight. So I'm always like, this, uh, this has a lot. The immediacy of getting something uh, nowadays is, it's, it's like that, it's so fast. I mean, it's, it's, it's like Vegas' buffet times 100. <laughs> it's so much to choose from. Oh so it's overwhelming, but it is great that you can connect more with your fans. You can be more present with them. You can update them. You can kind of, through that outlet, show them where you're at. So I, I, I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. I was saying with Emily how it's crazy that people can now go on Netflix or these streaming sites and just stream and binge watch all these episodes where I grew up and I had to wait week by week to watch, which is what we have to do for Bones. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, you can, I, mean it, I guess there is binge watching. Yeah. Right? You go out and you just watch like a whole series for what, eight hours? <laughs> and you take in four seasons or something? Yeah. That's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. I mean, I've done it when I played golf. I've binged golf. <laughs> like, I'll just run the course yeah. and get it done as fast as I can. No shows that you currently binge watch? or? No, no shows I, I currently binge watch. Um, I'm really strange with television. I'll, I'll catch on to a series and I'll give it some time and then I'll lose interest pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I got into Westworld, and then I got lost. Um, <laughs> and, and it's nothing against the... I mean, the characters are fantastic. Some of them are just really amazingly mind-blowing. I mean, Anthony Hopkins can just, like, say good morning, and he yeah. can say, there's your Academy Award. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's... It really is... I think I love character-driven pieces. I mean, I think Sherlock on CBS is a pretty good show. Examines, like, how relationships drive series, and I think that was one of the reasons why I loved Bone so much is... It's really the relationship that drives it and not the plot or not yeah. the, you know, I, I couldn't think about doing a law, a law show. I'd be stuck in a courtroom for so many hours. I would go crazy. That's like 30 years. That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's like the Dick Wolf thing. You know, that's that's a long, it's, a, it's heavy material. You're, you're just looking at banisters and, you know, a cup of water and you're doing cross-examinations. <laughs> and It's the same in medical shows, I mean, which are great, but... You're just, you're just there, and you're in the hospital. You're in the ER. Yeah. I mean, you just got a lot of swab stuff and cottons and blood. And I mean, at least we were able to get out. Yeah. You know, I wasn't stuck to 
you know, the forensic platform. Well, Emily kind of was, but she was fun because she wanted to get out, yeah. which kind of created the relationship. So I watch a lot of sports to answer your question. I love sports and I like watching classic movies or I like to watch sports that have already happened because I know what's going to happen. <laughs> so I kind of feel like this is kind of cool. I'm watching the sporting event. Let's pretend it's like it's there and I know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. And it happens. <laughs> and I'm like, I just predicted that <laughs> in my mind. I'm thinking that. That's how messed up I am. It's good, it's good for your ego. It, it, it's crazy. You know, it's it's. It's bizarre. I kind of, I kind of like that. Now we know what you've been doing at home on your days. Yeah, off. driving everybody crazy. Fluffing pillows and watching sports. Well, I've been run. fighting appliances too. I, I mean, I, I just, <laughs> mercury and retrograde is in my household every day. It doesn't stop. You know, that's that's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, what's next for you? You know, you did direct a couple episodes of Bones. Is directing something that you're passionate about? Could you see yourself going that route, or do you still want to be in front of the camera? Well, I'd love to direct. I mean, I've done uh, over 14 episodes of Bones through the series, and I've done. Um, you know, the producing aspect of it. I did a few on Angel. I did a show called The Finder. Mm -hmm. um, I love the directing because you just get a sense of being able to work with the actor and, and really know as an actor how, where they're feeling, where they're coming from, and how they're feeling going into a scene and being able to guide them and encourage them through certain moments. Because um, it's always difficult when you're, when you're acting and, you know, you got to get your lines down and you're so nervous. <laughs> And you're like, okay, everyone's watching, and then the bell rings, and it's quiet, and you got to deliver, and it's difficult. It's a, it can be very stressful. Um, you have to be in that zone, and you kind of have to just kind of throw everything out. You've done your work, and just just have fun with it. So, I enjoy that process a lot. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm just going to strictly focus on one or the other. Um, I enjoy all of it, so we'll see what happens. Do you think television is where you'll stay? I mean, I, I think what I like about television is the the work aspect of it and the immediacy of it. Um, what I love about films is the process of rehearsal and the process of digging into a character for an extended period of time, which I wouldn't love to do. Um, you know, maybe that is something that's in my future. Hopefully it is. And uh, if I find a good character that I love and can really respond to a director and do something of some art pieces would be, it would be great. I mean, I would love that, yeah. Awesome. Well, I do want to give a little bit of a, not spoilers, but I want to see where we're going here at the end of Bones. So we just saw uh, Bones lost her father and, and she's grieving. Which I'm very upset um, about, by the way. I know. I didn't, because I, Ryan is so, his character is so great. Is it hard for you because you've been in this yeah. world, so when a character is killed off? It's tough with Ryan because I, I loved being, a, I mean, Ryan O'Neill. I mean, it's just, that's like classic. Yeah. I mean, that's a icon to me. He, to what he's done, the work and his is so amazing. Um, so it was tough to see his character go because I always enjoyed doing scenes with him. But you have to sometimes kill those characters off in order to create the, the storyline going yeah. forward. It's important, I think. Um, some would agree, some would not. I mean, when John Francis Daly was killed off the show, I know that was very difficult for a lot of people to see Sweets go. He was such a great character, great person to be around on set. Um, but these things happen because the story evolves in that direction. Now, some people may think that's wrong, but uh, that's just the way it is. So who's getting killed off next? Tell well, I, can't, I can say that yeah. <laughs> a few people are going to get shot and thrown over a mountain. Sheesh. A few? Maybe. What is this, George R. R. Martin's new series? Like, you just I don't know. Gotta, you got to watch and see. It's, I will say it's going to be a fun ending. It's good for the fans. Fox has given us a, a platform to deliver for that. Um, and I, so we, were so, we were so gracious of them to do that for us and allow that instead of getting canned and cut from the schedule. So we're really pleased about that. Yeah. So, you know, this week, as I said, Bones was dealing with grief, doing her typical thing where she kind of shuts you out. Yeah, um, I don't get it. I you think she'd learn by now. You would think, yeah. But she's she's good at that. But I'm good at, like, poking in her back and, yeah. you know, getting <laughs> underneath her skin. And, What's going on? What are you doing? Why? I'm right here. You know? Make a noise. <laughs> Do you guys have, like, such a good rapport now? Is, is it weird to kind of be apart because you were together for so long? She's like your TV you, wife. No, yeah. She, she really is was. She wife. is. She, yeah, and it was great to... Uh, I, I just spoke to her last week. We stay in contact. And we're both like, it's so weird not seeing you, <laughs> you know, on the sets so many years. And, uh, you know, we've created such a bond and a trust with one another that we brought that to our um, to our acting coach for seven, eight years during the show. And every weekend we'd meet and rewrite the script and go over those moments. And blessed to have a co-star who was able to want to do that. And also someone who was there 
through me with each other through times of, of grief or whatever, because things happen and you do things in a way that uh, with the characters that you're there for each other. So you know what's going on in her mind as she does in your mind, but the audience doesn't know, yeah. which makes for a really great chemistry connection. The audience doesn't know much right now, guys, for Bones. He's not giving us any spoilers. Well, I, I just said someone gets shot. There's people get thrown off a mountain. What else more would you like? I'm just, I want you to slip a little bit. You, you're giving us enough. That's Somebody good. might come out of a wheelchair. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> he's been in this game a long time, guys. He knows what he's doing. Um, now, before I pass this off to audience Q&A, I did ask Emily when she was here what her favorite bone was, so I have to ask you, what's your There's favorite none. bone? I, I, my bone of contention with her, dealing with stuff. <laughs> that was my, dealing with her uh, character's uh, annoyance sometimes could really get under my skin. <laughs> but I allowed that. Yeah, bone of contention, I like it. All right, who's up first for these audience questions? Here we go. I'm sorry, I'm nervous. Hi, my name is Sahasha, I'm a huge fan. Um, my question is, do you have any shows that have impacted you the way your shows have impacted your fans? And also, I, would you ever do theater? I know you did theater a long time ago, but would you ever do theater yeah. again? Definitely would do theater again. I think it's really the place where you really are the most vulnerable um, and, and just the most open as far as creating off of fear and space and, and, and time and just the, the fourth wall. I think that's ultimately the best journey. Um, as far as shows that have influenced me as a kid growing up, hmm, it's a good question. How Planet of the Apes was cool. <laughs> and I mean, I thought Steve Austin was pretty cool. I like shows that were, I mean, the television was different back then. Um, I'm dating myself now. Um, but I, I also love the characters in comedies. Um, Cheers was one of my favorite shows. MASH was another great show that I love to watch. Um, Wings, remember Wings? Relationship shows, like stuff like that. Um, Seinfeld was hilarious. Friends was great. I mean, they, you really have people, characters that are, you're welcoming them into your home. They, there's either, for us it was uh, the FBI or our house. For them it was a couch. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of a staple when you really think about it. Archie Bunker was the, the best. Norman Lear, as, as far as what he did in transfer, I don't think you can really do that types of subject matters today in television. If it's, it has to be done very smartly. So those types of shows really kind of influenced me. For me, it was Buffy and Angel, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I love you for that. I'm dating myself. Good job. Uh, we're going to take our next question from an online viewer. So Lucy wants to know, what are you going to miss the most about the cast and behind the scene moments? Behind the scene moments, we're always arriving for rehearsals and knowing like what director was going to be we were going to be working with. So we had different types of directors, obviously, and they changed. I'll miss all those directors that came in and, and um, touched our lives somehow through the work. And uh, we had one director. His name was Jeannot. He was a French director. Great, great guy. So I always loved playing pranks on him. And um, whether it was stuffing his bag with weights or bananas or like fruit and, and he wouldn't know and then he'd leave and be, he'd be like busted from the guard. I mean things like that to me were just priceless moments. Being behind with the cast and enjoying those moments with Emily as she would get in and know and be laughing that like, I'm gonna miss those moments um, and the crew just the the DP that we had Bobby Altman was great who, who directed this the next one, I think it is, the Demolition Derby one, which is awesome. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. That's a really good episode. Um, so I'll miss a lot of behind the scenes with that and, the, and just the craft service table is always fun, mm -hmm. you know. Um, awesome food. Yeah, you know, you go in, get a cup of tea, you take a bite of a donut. I wouldn't spit it out. Some people <laughs> would. I liked all that kind of stuff. The sets, you know, the props. Gluten. Gluten. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, hi, David. I'm Emma. So your uh, directing on Bones has actually inspired me to go into directing when I'm older. I want to go to study directing in film school. I'm only 16 now, so I'm already looking at that. So I was wondering if you have any tips for an aspiring director. I mean, I can tell by the shots you use that you clearly, you know, have like a film aspect to the way you film it. And I just want to know why you choose those shots and stuff like that. Well, I went to Ithaca College and I became a little kind of... <laughs> Uh, creative in the mind in certain areas of my life that opened up those doors. <laughs> I'm not telling you to go out and do that. And, can, and that can be like just going to a diner and being 
uh, t- taken back by their pancakes and omelets that have so many different ingredients in them. But walking around cities and towns, uh, it's, New York is right outside there. You can walk and just see different angles and, and use different lens sizes and frame certain areas. It, really being around the people, going to see theater, I think for a director is so important because taking an acting class it would be great for you because you get to know what they're going through. You get to know what the actor goes through. And if you have that sense of understanding that, then as a director, you'll be able to you know, understand that and, and bring them on this journey. Um, you know, we could read some Joseph Conrad. Um, Joseph Campbell, I mean, would be great. Um, uh, you know, myth and meditation stuff. I mean, I'm getting pretty deep. We could have a cup of coffee if you'd like. No. <laughs> And now, you really want to get out there and just see and walk around with your camera, have fun, and, and do small things with your phone. Make movies, be creative, because in today's world, you have a lot to at your disposal. So there, use it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great advice. We go right um, over here. Hi. I just want to say I'm really going to miss phones. Aww. And also, I was wondering, what was one of your favorite episodes to shoot, like, ever, out of all of the seasons? Out of all of them? I loved, well, the 200th episode was exciting for me. Because it was kind of a throwback, a little Hitchcockian, although I didn't want it to be so, like, we're doing a Hitchcockian type of film, uh, story here. But as a director, I was able to use just no steady cams, a lot of dance floor and dolly, just shoot it the way they used to shoot it, hard lenses. Um, so, and this, the, the challenges of getting a plane up in the air and doing stunts and building that plane on the stage was, and, and the costumes. I mean, it was the, where you were with the budget and how to make it look great was really the challenge of that kind of a type of a show. Uh, the dialect, how they talked, it was really a great, I love that, that show. That was a lot of fun. That was one of my favorite shows. Good director, too. And that was only the 200th episode, guys. Oh. All right, we have time for one more question. Here we go. Hi, that's me. <laughs> I'm Michelle. I stutter, so bear with, with me. Um, did you ever have a day in all the seasons that, you, that you've done that everything just went, went to crap and you're like, okay, I'm done. I'm enough. I've had it. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question. It happens really regularly in my life. But um, I think that um, you need to understand that things pass, you know, what you're going through and use it rather than fight it. Certain, you know, you're not getting certain takes or you messed up a line or you can't, you're fighting lines you don't have the right shot or you're, you got to get the cr- camera off a crane and you're just upset because it's taking so long. You just kind of put, keep pushing ahead. Don't, don't look sideways. Don't look back. Don't listen to those voices inside. Just keep trucking. Just, and really believe in yourself. Believing in yourself is such a very powerful, powerful thing to have. And I think that's, that belief comes from inside and you can't listen to those voices. Oh, great advice here from David. Um, thank you so much for being here. And everybody should watch the final few episodes of Bones because we're done, guys. It's going to be done forever. Until a reunion, of course. Yeah, it's okay. Until we do some of them. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for having Thanks, me. Guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs>